Hey y'all, welcome back to Crime Time with Mel. My name is Mel, in case you've never seen me before. Hi and hello. Welcome to my channel. I hope, I know I'm so extra. I hope you decide to stick around and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do missing people, unsolved cases, and some solved cases over here just to give us a little bit of a breather. And if that's something you enjoy, I really hope that you decide to subscribe. And if you already know who I am, thank you so very much to each and every single one of y'all. I can see all your screen names in my face right now and I love y'all more than you know. Today's video is going to be a solved case of Tara Grinstead. She was a beautiful Georgia beauty pageant winner and uh, this case is heartbreaking. I am from Georgia, so I have heard about this case before. Y'all let me know in the comments down below if y'all have heard about it. This is gonna be a little graphic, so if you've got a queasy stomach, you might wanna skip this video. And just a little disclaimer, this is a true crime video. All research I have found on my own. If I miss anything, please leave it down in the comments. And I mean no disrespect by this video. I just want to spread awareness. So let's go ahead and get right into today's video. Tara Faye Grunstead was born November 14th, 1974 in the very small town of Hawkinsville, Georgia. She was a typical sweet, sweet Southern belle. She was beautiful, beautiful brown hair, big, beautiful smile, warm brown eyes, and her smile lit up a room. Her makeup and her hair was always perfection. And despite being a small person, she had a very large and in charge personality. She loved to sing and she gave 100% at whatever she did. And if you don't know, in the South, beauty pageants are a very common thing. They are also extremely competitive. She started competing in beauty pageants in high school. She won her first trophy when she was a senior in high school and her mom was just always so proud of her whether she won or not she was just completely proud to be her mom but tara had one pageant in mind that she was determined to win and that was the crown to the miss tifton pageant and this is one of the miss georgia preliminary pageants so this is a pretty big pageant girls from all over are going to compete at this miss georgia pageant and tara spent a ton of time practicing for this pageant. She would sing over and over and over trying to perfect her song, make her mom listen to it countless of times. And she bought this beautiful, long, stunning dress. And on the day of the pageant, Miss Tifton pageant, she put her hair up. She was determined to win this. She looked Stunning. And her mom said that even if she was nervous, it never showed because of how poised she was. And Tara in 1998 won the Miss Tifton pageant. And this was one of the happiest days of Tara's life. And then this took her to the Miss Georgia pageant, which was one of her dreams. And even though Tara did not win, she was still so very grateful for the opportunity to even compete in that pageant. And she looked gorgeous doing it. Five years later, Tara is now 30 years old and she went to college, graduated, and now became a teacher. Irwin County High School in Osceola, Georgia. And she was extremely popular in this high school. All the students loved her. All the teachers loved her. Again, she just shined where Ever she went and she loved being a teacher so much that she eventually wanted to be a superintendent or maybe even a high school principal but she had dreams she had a great public image and all the girls in high school would give her ask her for advice she would talk to the girls and you know encourage them to go compete into beauty pageants because it really boosted her confidence and she felt like that it would help these young girls with their confidence as well she was just an amazing mentor to all these students and she has it all she even has the most perfect southern gentleman in her life marcus marcus was stunning he was super handsome all the ladies swooned over him tara and marcus fell completely head over heels for each other marcus was a cop who turned to be a soldier and when 9 11 came he left to go to afghanistan and marcus had a great reputation when he came home from war they were known as a power couple 
and on Monday, October 24th, 2005, Tara never showed up to school to teach, and that was completely out of character for her. The teachers, her friends, everybody was calling Tara and she wasn't answering. When they went to the police to report Tara not answering, missing, they told her that they nobody has even seen Tara since that previous Saturday, October 22nd. And that was in Fitzgerald, Georgia. She was helping the girls get ready for a beauty pageant there. But that was two days ago. Like what happened on Sunday and Monday? What happened in between those two days. When investigators go to Tara's house, they see her car parked in the carport. They also notice that Tara's door is unlocked, but Tara is not at home. When they walk in, they notice that Tara's bed's unmade, there's a lamp broken on the floor, there's a clock on the floor, and this makes investigators feel kind of uneasy, like obviously something's not right here. But no DNA was found, no evidence, no blood, no nothing to suggest that a crime had, or anything like that had been committed there. But they did notice that Tara's phone was still on the charger by her bed. So they thought maybe Tara left in a hurry. But again, her keys are there. Her purse is there. Law enforcement searched Tara's car. They don't find anything, but they do notice that the driver's side seat is pushed all the way back. Tara's 5'3". She would not have been able to reach the pedals. I am 5'2", I can't reach the pedals. Law enforcement also noticed that there was a latex glove outside in the yard. So was somebody using this to cover up, cover up fingerprints? And was it Marcus? He was a former cop, so he would know out of everybody. So a few months before Tara disappeared, she heard Marcus was back in town from war, but Marcus never told her. She obviously was super hurt by this, called Marcus, asked what was going on, and Marcus broke it off with her. He said that he was actually seeing somebody else and it was over. Wow, that that's kind of a douche move. If you and then two weeks before she went missing, a fight breaks out between the two of them. Tara's screaming and threatens to call Marcus's parents to let them know that he's dating an 18 year old girl. And a ton of conflict is over this. And actually, Marcus gets investigated by the department that he used to work for. And Marcus tells investigators that he broke up with her, that he hasn't seen her in a while. And he actually turns the tables around on Tara and says that she was upset and depressed over their breakup and wanted to take her own life and just acting really crazy. Now, this, again, is a very rural area. It's in the country. There are tons of woods, wells, ponds, lakes. I mean, tons of places. A massive search of the county was done. Detectives from all over the region, investigators from all over the region came in to help search for Tara. And they are looking at everyone. And of course, small town, rumors start spreading around everywhere. And now they're looking into one of Tara's students, Anthony Hunt. Now, Anthony was known to be a little obsessive with Tara. He even showed up at Tara's house, banging on the doors, yelling, screaming her name. And he was known to be a little unhinged and just very impulsive. But Tara, being the good, pure woman that she is, wanted to help Anthony and kind of guide him. He, Anthony was, you know, kind of a loner. He was very shy and Tara just wanted to make him feel not so alone, which we need more people like Tara in this world. And Anthony definitely had a crush on Tara. I mean, who wouldn't? She's stunning. She's not only beautiful on the outside, but beautiful on the inside as well. And he might have mistaken her kindness for a little something more. Anthony ends up declaring his love for Tara and Tara shuts it down. She's like, no, there's, you know, there's nothing between us. There's no romantic involvement between us whatsoever. And I'm sure this made Anthony feel some type of way. Police did eventually come and arrest Anthony for criminal trespassing and disorderly conduct, conduct which I'm sure pissed him off even more. And then a few months later, Tara was gone. So here Anthony was rejected by Tara and arrested all on the same day. 
Anthony denies that he knows where Tara is, said that he loves her and he would never hurt her. He said that he was at home with family and working that day 120 miles away. Police look and he gets crossed off. And investigators are searching her phone, looking through her messages, trying to find anything to find out where Tara is. So that glove that was found in the front yard of Tara's home, they did send that off to the GBI crime lab to get tested for DNA or fingerprints. And they did come back that it was male DNA and there was a partial fingerprint inside the glove. Now they have something to go off of. Investigators go through 200 males. Any male that came in contact with Tara, Marcus, Anthony, anyone they got DNA from. And there was no match. They even searched in the database for felons to see if there was a match and nothing came up. Oh my gosh, that's so frustrating. Like to know that you have one step and then you're like, oh yes, and then no. Four years go by and a YouTube video comes out. Um, the channel name was Catch Me Killer and he said that he admitted to everything. He was like taunting the police and saying that he was Tara's killer. He also claimed that he killed others and kind of playing this cat and mouse game with detectives. The detectives traced his IP address and they found him in North Georgia. And when they got to his house, he claimed it was just a hoax. He was a bored kid living at his mom's house with obviously nothing else better to do and just did this hoax. So it came out that that wasn't even true, which I could not imagine how this family feels. North Georgia is two hours away from Osceola and I just, that, that, oh gosh, don't even, I'm not even going to go there. They did arrest him. They did DNA test on him. They checked into his alibi, everything, and he came back as innocent. He said that he just wanted to see how many views he could get. Like, that's how much people will go through to get views. That is, that, that's insane to me. Like that is just crazy to me. And I hope he learned his lesson when he got arrested and charged. And despite Tara's body never being found in 2010, a judge declared Tara officially deceased. And in 2017, a woman named Brooke came forward and shared her story. She said that her boyfriend, Bo Dukes, was keeping a secret and she had bugged and bugged and bugged him to let her know what this secret was. And finally, he let her know. And he told her years, years earlier, his roommate Ryan woke him up and said that he had Tara after robbing her home. Now, Bo and Ryan attended Irwin County High School where Tara taught school. And Bo was in one of Tara's classes. Bo said that Ryan used his truck to transport Tara's body to a nearby pecan orchard that was owned by Bo's family. And later he said, Bo said that Ryan showed him exactly where that location was. Bo told Brooke, his girlfriend, that Ryan helped him burn Tara's body and it took two days. Bo then told authorities his story and they arrested Ryan and Bo as well. And Bo was charged with covering up a crime and sentenced to 25 years in prison. And Ryan confessed to strangling Tara and hiding her body in the pecan orchard and burning her in a fire pit. Ryan was set to go to trial April 2019, but an attorney took his case pro bono and they appealed his case because of a judge denying him state funds for expert witnesses. And so far, I'm not quite too sure of the outcome just because of COVID and like the whole state funding issues, but a, the judge says that Ryan gave up any claim to state money when he declined the legal represent representation. And I have to say I agree with that. So he denied a public attorney. 
I mean, once you're, once you deny it, you say you don't need it. I feel like you, you, it should not be legal for you to be like, oh, okay, well, I do want one because actually I don't think I'm going to get away with this. So, like, and that DNA that was found in the glove did match Ryan, but his attorney claims he made a false confession under the influence of substances and that Ryan was at home asleep. I don't know about that. Y'all, have y'all heard about this case? I, I'll let y'all know. I will try to keep y'all updated on what happens um, to Ryan. I tried looking before I filmed this video to see if like any updates or anything and I haven't found anything. But I will let y'all know as soon as I find an update. And I will do an updated video here shortly. It will just be one video about a few cases into like rolled into one about any updates that I have. Just because some updates aren't as long and I don't want to just post a two minute video. So it will just be all rolled into one. So I hope y'all don't mind about that. And again, let me know if y'all have heard about this case. Let me know your opinion about this case. So please be kind in the comments down below and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up I would appreciate it more than you know it will help out my channel and get me growing more on YouTube y'all are doing an amazing job and my channel is growing and I know y'all see it because I get comments from y'all all the time and thank you so much don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my face whenever I upload next and I will see y'all in my next video. I hope y'all have a great week and I will see y'all next time. Bye y'all.